Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And the next time you hear politicians ask for more money, ask them what they're doing with the money they're already getting, because they're getting a lot. And I mean a real lot. I mean a, a record lot. I mean a wicked record over the top, like shooting fish in a barrel because they have us over a barrel lot. Get this. In the first five months of this fiscal year, tax revenues hit a record. One tree and one hundred four billion nine hundred forty seven million dollars. That's in just five months. And that's from just us. Never in the history of man has so much money been raised in so short a time. And never in the history of man has so much of it been squandered until it's gone. And not only gone, gone another 377 billion bucks on top of that. So deeper in spending after it's all gone. So let's be clear, there's no problem with all the money coming in. There's a very big problem with all the money going out because the money that these guys are taking from us is not an issue. What they're doing with it is because they're collecting 90 billion bucks more from us for the first five months of this fiscal year than they were at this exact point in the last fiscal year. And that was a record. Yet I keep hearing liberals say that they need more, more money for more programs, for more rescues, for more of their friends, for more infrastructure, for more of everything. The president's budget includes a trillion dollars, in fact, in such revenues over the next 10 years. Very creative when it comes to getting more money, not so creative when it comes to finding ways to save that money. And that's the problem. No matter how much they take, they're still in the tank. They're still taking from us. It is taxing all of this spending. And we're supposed to be happy that these deficits aren't as bad. You know, that's like being grateful the iceberg caused only a minor gash in the ship. We are still in deep ship because we're still going under and we're still sinking and fast. So we better get a handle on this spending now because we don't have a revenue problem here. To tax experts Maddie Dupler, Tracy Burns, who say we have a what the hell are we doing with that revenue problem here? Tracy, what's going on? There's no, there's no accountability, Neil. We need shareholders to say, what the heck are you doing with all our money? Look, one third of the money that comes in the door is going out, right? For interest payments and Social Amazing, Security, right? right off the bat. So then, you're, what are you left with? And there's no cap on it. They could spend it on lunch for all we know. No one. Because you know what? We don't have term limits. If we had term limits, you'd be voting these guys out really quickly. Instead, we're listening to their spiel and voting them back in. I don't know what we're doing. Matty, also what we're doing is it's, it's, we're making a big deal. The mainstream media tends to make a big deal. Well, it must be uh, that they need more money because they keep mm -hmm. screaming for more money. And as I say here, I mean, we're, we're, that is not an issue. Money just keeps coming in. And when you raise taxes and you get even a slight uptick in economic activity, that, that's not the problem. It's what they're doing with that that's the problem. Right. And, you know, you're talking about the deficit going down and the media making and the left making a big deal about this being a major accomplishment. Well, yeah, it's easy to cut the deficit when you tripled it in your first year in office, which is exactly what the president did. So this shows you the folly of focusing on the deficit, exactly what you've been saying here, Neil. We have a spending problem, not a revenue problem. And the deficit simply is just the delta between those two things. And we need to be focusing on what the actual size of government is rather than what government's taking in to fuel that growing size of government. And, and, and obviously this touches on for a lot of folks. We went on the street to talk to them about what they made of this conundrum where the cash keeps coming in, but more cash keeps going out. Take a look at this. They're way too high. A little high. There are some very, very wealthy people that ought to be paying more. Some people get asked to pay more than their fair share to try and support others. I don't think that by the time Obama's out of office that we're going to get back to a place where we are deficit neutral. I think they could do a better job of fiscal management. How can somebody spend more than they take in? They go broke, right? The collapse that we had in 2008 was a macro version of what's happening micro. If we think individuals shouldn't be on that all that credit, then we shouldn't think the federal government should be on all that credit. We decided to, to tape that like a, like a Godzilla picture to, to sort of <laughs> tighten the fear. How did we do that? That's pretty cool. Tracy, uh, but that's really the, 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 the gist of it, right? I mean, if we ran a house this way, and I know you, you're a great accountant besides, the numbers don't add up. And that, I think, is the most frustrating people, thing to the people on the street. We budget. You know, the average work week has not gone up. People have not seen pay increases, and they've managed. As a matter of fact, consumer spending's up, so how are we doing it? And yet the government can't do it. We're figuring out a way to do this, Neil. And you know what? We have to start voting in people that can 
she's at. But you know, we've <laughs> learned when, when Republicans were in charge, they weren't good at this. Democrats yeah. in charge, they're not good at this. I'm beginning to wonder, they talk a good game, but uh, I don't know, Maddie. The bottom line is that they're far more creative coming up with ways to, to raise money, to get money, than they ever are at, 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 at finding creative ways even to, to curb the spending of that money. You know? Well, you're, well, you know, you're right. And it's because as long as you have tax increases on the table, as long as you have the president talking about more fairness, which of course for him means more taxes, more revenue, bigger government, no one ever, no politician on either side of the aisle has any reason to rein in their spending. If they think they're going to be able to get a bigger pot of gold through taxing taxpayers, through taxing business owners, why would they... And also have someone else flip the bill. You know, it's very, exactly. very convenient, Tracy, to say the rich should pay more. Uh, they have to pay their fair share. Well, obviously, you know, the top rate didn't just go back up to 39.6% right. with all the health care costs and everything. It's really in the mid-40s, and, and I'm not even throwing, uh, you know, state and other taxes. Spending's not going to stop, Neil, if you have to keep buying votes. If you continue to allow uh, Washington to do this, it's not going to go away because you're going to find all these little groups that come out of the woodwork come election time that need a little piece of the pie, and that's what happens with our so what do they do? They just keep, keep hitting the upper income? Yeah, that's what they're doing, right? And yeah. But meanwhile, you hit them six ways till Tuesday. They're still not spending this money properly. I mean, geez, drive down 48th Street. How many potholes are there? Don't even tell me about shovel-ready projects. It's not working. And collecting more money is not the answer. I say get them out. Jeez. Well, in New York, the problem with the potholes is we have a mayor who apparently doesn't use, Matt, you know. He doesn't drive. No, no. Dude, that's just not... He can borrow Plows are an alien concept here. Um, <laughs> you know, Maddie, another thing you think of in this great debate is uh, something that a Democratic congressman raised with me on this network not too long ago when he reminded me, you know, Neil, the top rate used to be north of 70 percent. And I said, well, so? And he said, that means we really would have a lot higher to go, which <laughs> tempted the argument we want to go a lot higher. I mean, right. where do you go with this? You know, if you tax every high income earner in this country at 100 percent, you still couldn't pay for the spending this administration wants to do. And, you know, this is true. This is just borne out by the numbers. You look at the historical norm uh, for taxing or excuse me, for revenues coming in. We're going to get to that level as a percentage of GDP. What we're not going to get to the historical norm of is spending. Spending is going to continue to be much higher than it was over the preceding half a century. And that won't change unless we have people in office who do want to restrain spending and who do take a stance against things like what's happening with the Obama administration and his new budget, talking about a trillion dollars in new tax increases. Until that kind of temptation and the argument is made against that quote-unquote fairness, we won't be able to get spending back down around its historical averages. You know, Neil, they all need to sit down in Congress and actually do their own taxes, because they don't. <laughs> I do. It's, it makes you want to puke. You have to keep a garbage pail next to you as you're doing them. If they did that, they really? would Really? You're doing your taxes I, and you're puking at the same it's time? It's horrible. Really? It's no, horrible. it's a mess. Probably it's... not to come over in the middle of that ordeal. Um, <laughs> ladies, I want to thank you both very, very much. Uh, and by the way, on this 